All right, guys. Today we're gonna talk about how we can make this cockpit for this Spitfire airplane that we've been working on in the past two episodes. In episode one, we made the shape of the body. In episode two, we made the wings. If you haven't seen those? Go check those out. But this is where things get a little bit tricky, right? Because if you look at this cockpit, it has a really, really weird shape. Okay, uh, you don't really. It's kind of hard to tell what's uh, how many objects we have over here. It's kind of hard to tell what the topology of this type of thing is going to look like. So this is the part where you really have to get into some, you really have to think about the topology, you have to be really careful, okay? This is the type of shit that, where you, you can't just mess around and just try to cheat your way through this, okay? You really gotta be careful and make sure that everything is right, otherwise it's gonna look like a disaster. Now, topology in Blender is one of those things that's usually just unavoidable, right? It, the only way to get good at it is to just practice and just spend a bunch of time just watching a bunch of tutorials and seeing a bunch of examples, right? So that's the only way you can really, really master this. Luckily, you can only learn this in about one hour. I got a little ebook out where I explain this shit to you guys so you don't have to browse through hundreds of different tutorials and spend years practicing Blender, okay? It only takes about an hour to read it. I got discount code so that you can go check that out. The link is in the description, okay? If you ask anybody in my Discord channel, they're gonna tell you what's in there, all right? And when we're making this cockpit, the first thing that that I would like to focus on, the first thing that I think we should think about is this part in the front here because that really seems like the absolute hardest part, okay? So how on earth can we make this cut over here? And keep in mind, we can't just make like a, a plane and just tilt it backwards because then it's going to be clipping through the surface and it's going to be a disaster in the long term, okay? We want this to perfectly connect with the body over here, as you see over here. So we have to make a nice cut like this and we have to take it back here and we have to make everything flow perfectly, okay? So I'm going to show you how we can start making this type of shape, all right? Now over here in the previous episodes, we started making this little, uh, we started making this cockpit and we have this shape so far. As you can see, it's basically like a sharp cut. It's nothing like the shape of the cockpit if you look at it from the side, okay? But, so if you see over here, this part kind of starts to go up. But then this part over here, we need to have like a kind of a, a cut under an angle, okay? It's as if you jam this surface underneath uh, underneath the surface of the airplane, right? I don't know how to explain this to you guys. But just look at, look at what you see in this picture over here in the reference and you, you're gonna understand what I'm talking about, okay? So we first have to make this correct angle, okay? We have to have a circular cut, which is kind of round like this, but if we look at it from the top, okay, we can't see it on my reference. If we look at it from the top, it's gonna look like a, like a little bit of a curve, okay, like this. But if we look at it from the side, it's gonna be perfectly straight. So how can we do that, all right? We're gonna go to our side view, because right now we have these faces over here, okay? We have these loop cuts over here. I'm going to use my knife tool for this. And let me just enable my screencast keys for you guys over here so you can see what I'm doing. All right. We're going to go over to side view. And of course, we're going to go to wireframe. And we're going to use our knife tool today. Okay. The knife tool, we can just make cuts everywhere and create new vertices and new edges. If you're not familiar with the knife tool, basically just click somewhere, you click somewhere else, and you add new vertices and shit like that. All right. That's what the knife tool does. You press K to activate that. Now, over here, we're going to have to use a special feature of the knife tool because we want to cut in through both sides. If we just cut in like this with the knife tool, we press K. If we hover around this vertex over here, it's going to snap somewhere over there and we click. And then we don't drag or anything. We just click once and then we click on the other corner over here and we press enter. First, we're only going to have a cut on one side. Okay, so that's not good because we also need a cut on the other side. Sure, we can delete the stuff and then we can use our 3D cursor to copy this and just put it on the other side. But... That's not necessary this time because what we can do is we can just use the, a, a particular function of the knife tool and we can just use it to cut on the other side as well. So we basically just cut through shit like a laser. Okay, let me show you how that works. Go back to our side view. Activate our knife tool again. We're going to uh, press C. Okay, we're going to press C and that's going to activate this function down here. With, you can see the little tiny letters down here. It says cut through is turned on. Okay, you can toggle it with C. So when you toggle it, you turn it on. Then when we do the same thing, we click on this vertex over here and this vertex down here. Okay, and we hit enter. Then it's going to cut through and cut on the other side as well. All right, as you can see right here. Now, the problem that we have this and the reason that we need to pay attention to our topology with, the, with this is because now we have a bunch of triangles and we have some really weird faces. Okay, for example, we have triangles over here. Now, we already talked about this in my ebook and I also mentioned this in some of the videos about why having triangles, is, it can be bad and why it's definitely preferable to have quads. Although in this case, it probably wouldn't be a problem to have triangles, but it can cause you problems uh, later on and it can give you some trouble when you're editing later on. So we're going to get rid of all the, uh, the triangles and we're only going to have quads. All right. So here's how we're going to do that. First of all, since we need a cut here, 
we need this to be dented kind of you know we have to get rid of these faces over here so let's select all these little faces in the back here okay which we separated with the cut we're going to select all these faces we can also do that from side view use our brush tool or something if you press c in edit mode you get this little brush select tool and you can click and drag and select stuff and we're going to delete these faces okay so now we have this little cut but the problem is we still have this stuff going on over here so we still have some triangles over here you can probably get away with keeping this triangle but i'm going to remove it just to show you guys how i'm going to clean up this topology okay i'm going to select all of these vertices above on top here but not this one over here because we don't want to slide that one we just want to slide we just want to get rid of these vertices on top here and now we can just uh, when we have those selected we can just press double g okay and we can slide these vertices anywhere we want so if we just slide them all the way to the end over here and we click now they're in the same place as these vertices over here which means we can just merge them by distance okay so i have that shortcut set to shift w but what you can also do if you don't have a shortcut for this you can just select all these vertices which are now in the same place and you can go up here i think this is in the mesh menu you can find this merge menu and you can merge by distance okay so now it's going to take all the vertices which are a certain short distance away from each other which are basically in the same place and it's going to merge them into one vertex so you don't have two vertices anymore right now it's just one that's one way to get rid of extra topology another way would just be to dissolve the edges okay we can select these edges over here all of these we can just select the entire loop okay and we can press x and then we can just dissolve edges and they disappear and we're good to go right i think we can probably also get rid of this loop cut over here i don't know if that serves any purpose down there but we're going to get rid of that one as well okay so now we have this nice beautiful cut over here that's exactly what we're looking for if you look at this from side view you see we got that uh, we got that out of the way now and what we have to do now is get this other curved part over here now it seems like it seems like our cockpit is a little bit uh, lower than what it should be, okay? So I think that we would probably have to take some of these edges and lift them up. I think maybe we uh, we should probably extrude some of these edges backwards. Okay, let's do this first. Let's place our 3D cursor over here. Okay, shift S. How are we going to do this? I think we should, it's better if we place our 3D cursor over here and we select these three edges. Now watch my shortcuts, what I'm doing over here, because this is probably going to be a useful trick for you. We're going to select these edges. We're going to extrude them. We're going to snap them back. And we're going to scale them to zero on the y and the x-axis so they come so they're perfectly aligned with the 3d cursor over here and then this part we're just going to snap to the 3d cursor and then we're going to remove the doubles we're going to merge the vertices by distance okay if you have a mirror modifier the same thing is going to happen on the other side but i already got rid of my mirror modifier so we're just going to have to do it manually this time all right so let's just do the same thing on the other side all right let's see how that works now we're a little bit higher up so now we're pretty much uh, good to go and what we have to do now is take care of this angled part, this part which is kind of sloped backwards, right? And we can do that by simply just sliding some vertices up and down. Now, should we slide both these and then slide these afterwards like this? That might give us some twisting and some bending over here. So that's maybe not the preferred result, okay? And that's why uh, this, this filling in this face kind of may give us a little bit of trouble, right? So maybe what we can do now is maybe we can get rid of some of uh, some vertices over here. We can get rid of some topology. Maybe if we delete this, for example, if we dissolve all these edges that we have over here, then we just have to slide this, right? And we'll be good to go. And we won't have much twisting going on in the shading over here. So we can do that. We got rid of the extra edge that we had in between there. We dissolved that one. And now we're just going to select these two edges. And we're going to slide them down until we get approximately the look that we want. Something like this, right? You can see in the blueprint over here, it's something like this. And that's looking pretty good, right? Now, so we got the cut out of the way, more or less, right? It's kind of also curved over here. That's because they have some more topology in real life. If you can really call it that, there's no topology in real life. But uh, it's kind of a smooth, round cut over here. But we're not going to, we're, we're just going to pretend it's a straight line because fuck it, right? And then what we're going to do is we're going to have to use these edges over here to make a little frame, okay? See, we have like a little frame for the window over here, all right? So let's figure out how we're going to do that now. And by the way, we're going to have some other some fun making these parts up here and making everything straightened out over here. That's going to be a, f a fun thing to do later on. We're going to have to mess with that a little bit because I think we're going to have to get the angle right off the bat. Okay, so let's select all this stuff. Okay, and we want to make it a little bit pointier, a little bit further down because we want the angle to be higher, right? If you look at this window over here, okay, it needs to be more like this angle, right? So if we if we scale it up, on these two axes it'll follow the right angle it'll be just as angled as it should be okay so we're just using our 3d cursor to scale this up a little bit only on the y-axis 
we can change its angle. Okay, so we're going to select this entire edge loop, which defines this hole that we just uh, cut out over here that we have for the cockpit. We're going to select that and we're going to use that to start shaping out the cockpit, right? So here we go. We're going to select all this. We're going to duplicate that with Shift D. We're going to snap it back into place. And then we're going to separate that to a new object using the P shortcut, right? So P separate uh, by selection, all right? And now that's a new object. Now let me show you another cool trick, okay? Because what we need to do next is we need to add some volume to this. So we need to turn this cut into a face so it's like a window like this, right? If you see, we're kind of basically shooting it so we turn it into a circle and then this part's going to be nice and circular and whatnot. The problem is that if we just kind of extrude it and we just kind of eyeball it, it's not going to be perfectly flat and we're going to have some shading issues. Chances are you're going to get it more like this and then it's going to be crooked and bent and we don't really want that. We want it to stay perfectly flat. Okay, we want it to be a perfectly flat surface. So uh, I also just want to demonstrate you this trick, even though maybe you can kind of eyeball it this time, but that doesn't matter. I want to show you this trick, okay? We're going to place our 3D cursor somewhere somewhere on this line which we have to follow okay so uh, on this uh, if we play, use these uh, vertices over here the 3d cursor is now on the line so this is the line which defines the surface that we need okay this is some vector math over here if you ever studied mathematics it's going to be a little bit easier for you all right but just pay attention anyway try to get an idea of what i'm talking about if you want me to talk about vectors in mathematics and shit and explain this in another video let me know because that's pretty interesting stuff as well i can help you in blender but anyway anyway we're going to place our 3d cursor here on this plane, which is defined by by these vertices, they're all on the same plane. If we're talking about it in terms of vector math, all right. We're gonna place our three D cursor there, and then we're gonna take this little uh, bow, this little arch that we created over here, and we're gonna once again separate that to a new object, okay? To a new object, and now this is its own object, and we need the origin of this object to be exactly on this three D cursor because then the origin is going to be on the plane on the plane. Uh, actually, it shouldn't be on the 3D cursor, but it should be on the same plane, but in the direction moved up in the direction that we want to move this, uh, this uh, uh, bow in. Okay, it's kind of hard to understand now if I don't visualize if I don't show you but you're gonna see once we do this. Okay, so I'm first gonna place my 3D cursor up here. Okay, on these two vertices, because it's still on the same plane. And then I'm gonna go up here to object, I'm gonna set origin and I'm gonna set the origin to 3D cursor. All right. So now the origin is somewhere on this line. That's the main point, the main idea. We could have also just made it easier, place it over here, place the origin there, made myself look stupid, right? That would have been the easiest thing to do. But then once we place the origin over here, somewhere on this plane, we're going to place our 3D cursor down here, okay? So now when our 3D cursor is the pivot point, shit's expanding from the 3D cursor, right? When we scale up, it's expanding from that point, which means if you look at it from side view, it's moving up in that direction, right? Now the problem is that if we just scale it up, we can also just define it on these two axes. That's not going to give us the result that we want. Okay, we basically just want to shift this whole thing in that direction. Okay, so one way to do this is to kind of scale it up and then you can just remodel it a little bit later. Okay, you scale it up on these two axes, but we don't want to do that. Okay, we want to keep the same shape. So what we're going to do now is we're going to go up here to this little menu called options. We're going to click on that and we're going to set the transform so it affects only locations. Okay, now look at what happens then. Now, when we scale something up, when we scale this object, bear in mind, we're in object mode for this, we're not in edit mode. When we scale this up, it's not, it's not changing its shape. It's not the, the scale of the object is not changing like it is in edit mode, right? It's only moving away. That's because we said it so that when we change something, it only affects the location. It doesn't affect the scale or the rotation or anything. Okay, only the location changes when we scale this thing up, right? So now we go to our side view, we can just scale this up. And it'll literally shift that little bow in that direction like this. Okay, so now we have this bow up here and it is perfectly aligned with the one down here. Okay, kind of hard to select this. Uh, I think we just ruined it. Okay, we need another one because we moved our, the one that we had before out of the way. I'm going to take this again and create a new one there. Now these two, if we just join those two together, shit, uh, now they're perfectly aligned with each other, right? So we can just select these two edge loops and we can just bridge the edge loops. Okay, W, uh, bridge edge loops. You can also use your loop tools. They're perfectly lined. It's a perfectly flat surface. I can show you that if we shade this as flat. Okay, we don't have any smooth shading on this. Where's my shading? Shade flat. Okay, you can see there's no bending in the planes. There's nothing. It's a perfectly flat surface, right? That's because we shifted it on the same plane, on the same surface and everything. Now, the other problem is that this needs to be a little bit more circular. One way that we could maybe do that is if we use our 3D cursor over here. Okay, and then we select this stuff and we scale it up on the Y and the Z axis like this. All right, 
but that's not really going to give us a perfectly circular result. Okay. So there's a couple of things that we can do now. Let me show you a, a couple of tricks. One thing that we can do is we can use our loop tools our curve loop tools. Okay. So first of all, if you don't have your loop tools activated, you go up here, your edit preferences, add ons, add ons, you type in uh, loop tools, just type in loop and you can find you find this little add on just enable that. Okay. And then I also made a separate video for loop tools. So be sure to check that out if you want to learn a little bit more about how this works. But what we can do now is we can make some of these, uh, uh, we can use our curve tool to make this a little bit more circular. So for example, we're going to take these two vertices. Okay, we place our 3d cursor down here, and we select this vertex, and we're going to scale this up by like 1.1, maybe 1.2, let's say, okay, and we're going to do the same thing over here on the other side, scale up by 1.2. And now if we select these two vertices, and if we use our curve tool, the curve tool is going to run a curve exactly through these two points and between the beginning and the ends of this, uh, of this edge loop, right? Now, it's still not quite circular yet. So it's not really the result that we really want. Okay. So maybe you can try to play around with that a little bit more, but I'm going to go with a slightly different technique. Okay, what I'm going to do is I'm going to measure the length between these two, uh, these two uh, vertices on the side. So the exact width of this object, I can go to my edge length over here, and it's going to tell me the, the this edge that connects these two vertices is 0 0.123 meters long. Okay. So now we're going to create a circle exactly over here. We have to align it perfectly. Okay, so we're going to place our 3D cursor right here, and we're going to align our view with this plane. So we select this and we press Shift, Shift Seven on the number pad. Okay, I think in this case I got to press Control Shift, otherwise it puts me on the other side. And now our view is perfectly aligned with this circle. Okay, with this surface, not the circle. Which means if our 3D cursor is over here, we create a new circle. Okay, a circle with we're going to have to set the right number of vertices first. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve vertices is what it's gonna have to be. Okay. We add a new circle, we get this little menu down here. And we're gonna align that with our view. Okay, so now the circle is aligned with our view, which is currently aligned with the angle of the window, right? So they're gonna be perfectly aligned together. We need twelve vertices. Twelve vertices, and right now the radius is one meter. Now the radius is half the length of the circle. Okay, so the full length needs to be 0 0.123 meters. And half of that is going to be we're gonna fucking Google it. All right, it's gonna be like 0 0.6 something. Okay, uh, 0 0.123 divided by uh, divided by two it's gonna be 0 0.0615 it has to be our radius. Okay, so we're gonna type in 0 0.0615. Okay, and then it should be perfectly aligned with this little circle that we have over here. We should be exactly the same width, right? Because the radius is going to be half of that. And now, if we go back to just looking at this whole thing, you can see we have a perfect circle on top here. Okay, everything is perfectly aligned, which is good, which is exactly what we want to happen. Now, the problem is that this is a little bit too high up. Okay, it's a little bit too high up. It goes a little bit over the body of the airplane like this. So we're gonna have to push the circle down a little bit. Luckily, we have our genius. Uh, the, select or affect only locations tool. Okay, so we're going to push this circle a little bit further down. Okay, a little bit further, we're going to push it down by like, something like this, let's say, okay. Let's see, we can do it from our front view, so that we can see that it aligns with the body of the airplane approximately like this. Okay, something like that is what where we want our tool to be. We're going to delete the lower part of the circle. And we're going to slide, we're going to get rid of this edge over here. And this part as well, we're going to have to scale it down so that it aligns with this uh, circle, we're going to join this back into one object. And this we can just do manually until we bring it until it looks like it's at the same point. Okay. Matter of fact, this should be exactly at the same point. So we can just snap these vertices to one another, it looks like we didn't quite nail. We didn't quite nail the width, right? It looks like we have to adjust the width of the circle. But anyway, the idea is still there. And then we can just bridge all these. And now we have the right shape for the front of our window, right? Ideally, you're going to want to have some more vertices over here and some more topology, but that's fine. It's going to be fine for the for our purpose over here. Now, we have this shape for the front window, that's the hardest part is done. Okay, we're going to take this edge loop from the side now. And we're going to bring it somewhere over here, where we're going to invert it. So it's on the other side, okay, we can just scale it to minus one on the y axis. So now it's pointed the other way. And if we just scale it down on the y axis, it's going to be a little bit more flat, it's going to be a little bit more, uh, it's not going to be a steep an angle, okay, something like this, just until we get to the back of the window. And I'm also going to disable this edge data that I have over here, I don't want all these numbers all over my fucking screen, right. 
Now the point here is that this needs to be exactly at the bottom of this uh, of this slope that we have down here. Okay, so I'm probably gonna have to push this backwards a little bit more, something like this. Let's see how that's gonna how that's gonna treat us. Something like this, right? Something like this, and then we can try to connect all this together, right? We place our 3D cursor up here. We place our 3D cursor up here. We can scale these vertices away. We can scale these vertices away to something like this, right? Something like this. And if we bring this exactly onto the top of this line over here, and then if we bring this edge loop from back here, if we bring that backwards a little bit more, they're going to be on the exact same point, which means if we join these two objects together, and if we merge the vertices, we also have to bring it over like this. Okay, so they're the same width. Okay, if we merge the vertices, now they're exactly the same. Uh, now they're perfectly connected. Okay, but this should probably stay a separate object for now. So we don't really want to do that just yet. Otherwise, we get this weird shading problems going on over here. Okay, so now it's pretty simple. We just have to take this stuff to the back. Okay, now that we got this really messed up mathematical shape, I wonder if this stuff is any easier in 3ds Max because I know the Blender is notorious for making you do this type of shit manually. It's really pain in the ass sometimes, but uh. We're gonna select this edge loop over here, okay, and just scale it down to zero with the uh, with the uh, y axis back here, right? It looks like there's something wrong over here. Okay, that's just a perfectly flat surface. I think we're gonna have to uh, scale these two up a little bit, these two up a little bit, so that so that we don't have this ugly, weird bent shape going on over there, okay? And it also looks like this part is supposed to be a lot wider than the than the bump back here, okay? So we're gonna have to do something about that. And now the rest is pretty simple, all right? We basically just have to add a couple of loop cuts over here, add a couple of loop cuts, and we're gonna have to make some somewhat of a round, round shape over here, more like a dome shape, which means we can probably just use our proportional editing, okay? If we just place our 3D cursor over here, we place our 3D cursor over here, we're gonna go to 1.2, we're gonna scale this up a little bit on the Z axis, 1.3 or something. Maybe this one's gonna go up to scale Z 1.2. This one's also gonna have to be 1.3, and this one's also gonna be 1.2, okay? 1.2, now we have this kind of dome shape up here, if you will, right, kinda like that. You can see where this is going anyway. And now, we got the right shape for that, and we're, we basically just shape the glass now, and we still just wanna mess around and make the, make the frames, okay? So one frame, is up here separating this window okay one frame so we're gonna select this inset that by 0 0.01 or maybe 0 0.005 or something we're gonna keep even offset okay something like this it kind of messes up my my geometry a little bit it kind of uh, bends things out of place a little bit but we can just use a G stretch tool to straighten this stuff out like this okay G stretch we don't want it to be a uh, to be uh, to be just evenly spread so we're just gonna set that to project okay loop tools uh, we don't want to flatten that we want to G stretch that okay all this stuff we want to G stretch that kind of sounds like a cool term G stretch G stretch it's the G stretch it's only it's a G tool right only the G's know this tool only real OG's know this tool it's not for the rookies right but we're gonna G stretch everything and then G-stretch everything and straighten it all out. So now it's kind of looking better. And we're gonna do the same thing over here. Okay, what was the what was the amount by which we inset this shit? Was it 0 0.05, right? We're gonna select all these faces around here. Okay, we're gonna inset 0 0.05. No, 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 no. Inset 0 0.005. 0 0.005, like that, all right? Now we have a little frame over there. And we're also gonna do the same thing up here in the front. Except this part, we're gonna have to cut it a little bit over here, okay? So we're gonna inset that by 0 0.005, okay? But this part, we're gonna have to straighten it out. So we're gonna select this entire edge loop, and we're gonna scale it to zero on the Z and the Y axes, okay? So we have this nice straight line as they made it over here, okay? So now, we're pretty much, we're pretty much good to go, right? The rest of this stuff is pretty simple, so I'm pretty sure that you don't even need my tutorial. You guys are good enough to make this, this stuff on your own. Okay, but if we just kind of, if we can make this little corner over here, okay, we can make this little, what axis is this going to be? We can make this little edge up here. You see this little sharp point, okay? Then we can try to uh, 
add some thickness, let's say, to these frames that we just made. Okay, we're gonna select all those, extrude them, right click and use Alt S to add some thickness to that. And we're gonna uh, select even offset, of course. All right, so now we have a bit of a frame there. All right, it's probably not aligned, aligned perfectly, but you guys can probably also figure this out. Just mess around with it a little bit more. I don't wanna spend too much time demonstrating pointless information to you guys. Okay, so for example, if we shade smooth now, then we can just go over here and mark some sharps. By the way, we're gonna use our edge split modifier for this. Okay, check this out. We did this in some of my live streams. Use edge split. We don't even have to do anything manually, but we're gonna uncheck uh, edge angle. We're only gonna use sharp edges so that only the edges that we manually mark are going to be sharpened, okay? So we're gonna select these edges over here. We're gonna go to Control E and we're gonna mark sharp like that, okay? So those edges are gonna be shaded as sharp, okay, like this. There's still some weird shit happening over here. I think we didn't select this one and this one down here and this one down here. Okay, mark sharp. Also, these uh, little inner edges over here are definitely going to have to be sharp. That's probably going to mess up all the shading everywhere. Mark sharp. But you can see now this part is smooth and nice while the rest is going to be sharply cut. This also definitely has to be a sharp cut. Definitely has to be a sharp cut. Or alternatively, if you want to make things look a little bit nicer, you can just add some loop cuts so that the, the stuff looks beveled. Okay, clear, sharp. We're going to get rid of that. We're going to add some loop cuts so that it looks like we have some small bevels, right? This is going to properly crank up your topology uh, and your uh, number of polygons, right? But uh, it's going to give you much nicer results. So if you're going for high quality and high realism, you're definitely going to want to try this, uh, uh, this loop cut technique, all right? Like this. Like this. We can also inset this stuff. Okay, we're going to inset this to make a little edge. So that the edges are shaded smoothly, but this stays shaded as a flat object, right? We're going to slide these up a little bit further, all right? Maybe we can do that manually uh, with our 3D cursor. Okay, we can straighten everything out like this. You see what our, you see what we're getting at with this? Also, this edge loop over here, we're going to have to push it a little bit further. All right, like that. Make that edge smaller. All right, we could have also just inset that. It would have been better. Like, we're going to inset this now, right? Like this. Inset that just a little bit and we have some nice beveled edges over there. Also for the frame, we're gonna do something about that. You see what I mean? So now that we shaded it smooth and we added some loop cuts, now the edges look a lot nicer. You can probably make it even better than I can if you spend some more time with it, right? But uh, you get the idea. See what I mean? Now we have this perfectly, perfectly shaped cockpit. I'm not gonna show you guys anymore today. I just wanted to show you this. I wanted to show you the topology behind how this stuff works. Again, if you want to learn a bit more about the topology, go check out the ebook. It's actually pretty good stuff. You can read it in like an hour. It's going to help you out a lot. And also, if you haven't already joined my Discord channel, we talk about everything Blender related in there. You can ask me anything. That's probably the best place to contact me if you want to ask me some questions. Link is in the description. We talk about other shit, not only Blender. We talk about fitness. We talk about money. We talk about women. We talk about everything you want to know. So join my Discord if you want to learn something about life or if you just want to be surrounded by 3D artists and share your artworks and shit like that. All right. So I hope I can help you guys. I hope you learned something from this tutorial. Hope you guys are going to stick around for the next one. If you're interested, we can also try to texture this airplane once I finish it. So if you want to see that, let me know in the comments. Let me know what you want to see next, and I'll see you guys in the next one.